Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're going to unbox the new NVIDIA GTX 1070 Ti Founders Edition. So, let's do that. Okay. Any minute now. Come on. And there we go. Unboxed the new Founders Edition graphics card. And well, that's about all we have time for there. We're now going to test the MSI GTX 1070 Ti. Had you there for a minute, didn't I? I'm not really sure what Nvidia were expecting me to do with this. I just got it like an hour ago and the release is today, less than 24 hours from now. So yeah, that's about all the time we have for the Founders Edition graphics card. Anyway, moving on, please note I do have a 34 game comparison between the 1070 Ti and 9 other GPUs at multiple resolutions in the works, and that will be on the channel in the next day or two once my voice fully recovers, because, yeah, that's going to be a big one, and as you can probably tell, I'm struggling a bit as it is. <laughs> I had, of course, intended to release that video today, but... Unfortunately, last weekend I did get sick and I've been very sick throughout the week. I lost my voice and yeah, I haven't really got it back yet. I've started to recover yesterday. I couldn't talk at all. I have been taking it easy. This is about the only talking I will be doing today. I've saved my voice for this one video because I have to get it done. Uh, but yeah, I was forced to cancel this week's episode of Upgrade My PC, please, as well because of those reasons. But don't worry, for those of you who enjoy this series, it has just been delayed till next Tuesday. And I do have another awesome AOC gaming monitor to give away. So it will be worth the wait. But again, I apologize for the delay on that one. So the big benchmark video I know many of you are expecting today has been delayed, but only by a few days hopefully. Uh, we will have an insane amount of data to go over shortly. Today we are going to sample a little bit of that data, but I want to focus more on the overclocking performance, power consumption and operating temperatures of the MSI version. For those of you who missed it last week, I did unbox this graphics card and I did a bit of a teardown so we could get a closer look at it. I also noted a few of the specifications, but let's quickly go over all that again before jumping into the benchmarks. The GTX 1070 Ti comes armed with 2,432 CUDA cores, which is just 5% fewer than that of the GTX 1080, but 27% more than the GTX 1070. However, while the 1070 Ti is much closer to the GTX 1080 than it is the 1070 when it comes to core count, things are a bit different on the memory side. Here the 1070 Ti retains the same GDDR5 memory as the vanilla 1070, and that means 2000 MHz memory providing a transfer speed of 8 gigabits per second. Then thanks to a 256 bit wide memory bus, the end result is the same 256 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, which means it's 25% down on the GTX 1080 and almost 40% down on the newer 11 gigabits per second models. Further complicating things are the clock speeds for the cores. The GTX 1070 Ti matches the base clock frequency of the GTX 1080 at 1607 megahertz, and that means it's clocked 7% higher than the stock GTX 1070 graphics cards. However, the boost clock is lower than that of the 1080 and instead matches that of the 1070. This all makes it a little difficult to work out exactly where the 1070 Ti will sit between the 1070 and 1080. We can safely assume that in less memory demanding scenarios, it will be very close to the 1080 in terms of performance, while it will be closer to the 1070 where memory throughput is more critical. Now, something key to note here is that Nvidia has tied the hands of their board partners somewhat, at least for now anyway, whereas companies like MSI can produce factory overclock GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 models, they aren't allowed to do this with the GTX 1070 Ti. Rather, it's up to the consumer to extract any extra performance. This means the potential to extract quite a bit more from the GTX 1070 Ti should be possible, and I suspect out of the box the MSI GTX 1070 Ti gaming won't look particularly impressive when compared to the gaming X variants of the 1070 and the 1080. For example, the GTX 1070 Gaming X already has a 5% overclock applied from the factory, and that will help it reduce the massive core deficit. So without wasting any more time, let's see how the new MSI GTX 1070 Ti Gaming compares to the 1070 and 1080 Gaming X models, as well as AMD's Radeon RX Vega lineup. 
First up, we have some Battlefield 1 results to show us just how well the MSI GTX 1070 Ti does out of the box. At 1440p using the ultra quality preset, it was good for an average of 93 FPS, which meant it was 12% faster than the GTX 1070 and 11% slower than the GTX 1080. So pretty much smack bang in the middle then. And as luck would have it, that places it alongside the air-cooled RX Vega graphics cards. I doubt that's a coincidence. Testing with Mass Effect Andromeda, we find that this time the GTX 1070 Ti is 9% faster than the factory overclock GTX 1070 Gaming X, but 11% slower than the 1080 model. That said, it was able to match the air-cooled Vega 64 graphics card with 61 FPS on average. Then finally, before getting into the overclocking, I have some Deus Ex Mankind divided results, and here the 1070 Ti was just 6% faster than the GTX 1070 Gaming X. This time it was 12% slower than the GTX 1080, so we might find memory overclocking will make a big difference here. AMD does do quite well in this title, and therefore the GTX 1070 Ti isn't quite able to catch the Vega 56 graphics card. Moving on, we have the stock power consumption figures, and here we can see that the MSI GTX 1070 Ti Gaming consumes the same amount of power as the GTX 1080 Gaming X, which is really only slightly more than the GTX 1070 Gaming X. So there's certainly nothing unexpected about these results, and it means that the 1070 Ti reduced system consumption by 8% when compared to Vega 56. When it comes to temperatures, MSI's Twin Frozer 6 cooler keeps things cool and quiet. If GPU temperatures remain below 60 degrees, the Torx 2.0 fans won't even spin up. Under load, the card maxes out at just 64 degrees, and the card ran virtually silent at this temperature. It was without question quieter than the case fans in my test system, which are already very quiet. So this should point to some fairly decent overclocking headroom, and speaking of which, let's check it out. Okay, so time to get serious. The GTX 1070 Ti is fairly impressive out of the box, but it's not exactly going to wow many enthusiasts. I mean, it sits between the 1070 and 1080 in terms of performance, which is fine and all, but it also sits between them in terms of price, which... Did we really need another card in this $100 price gap? Since you can't buy a factory overclock 1070 Ti, I'm curious to see what's possible here. So I fired up the MSI Afterburner utility and started the process of working out how far the core and memory could go. In the end, I landed on what I feel is a pretty mild overclock, to be honest. The base core clock was happy at 1767 MHz, while the memory went to 2252 MHz. That's a 10% bump for the core and a 12% increase for the memory. This resulted in a Turbo Boost 3.0 frequency of at least 2 GHz in games, which is about a 9% jump from the stock boost frequency. I was hoping to reach at least 2050 MHz, and I'm sure we will see reviewers achieving that or better. Perhaps I just was a bit unlucky with my sample. Anyway, what kind of gains does this overclock net us? Let's move on to find out. Once again, we have Battlefield 1 up first, and here we see an impressive 13% jump in performance, hitting 105 FPS, and that is enough to match the GTX 1080 Gaming X. Although we only managed to run a 10% frequency boost, this extra gain has come from the increased memory bandwidth. The good news here is that you can achieve GTX 1080 light performance through overclocking. Factory overclocked 1080 performance, in fact. For those wondering, a custom overclock on a standard 1070 Gaming X card still sees it full, just short of the 1070 Ti stock out of the box figures. This time we see a very large 15% gain in Mass Effect Andromeda, again that's a little higher than I was expecting. Raising the power limit and overclocking the memory has had a big impact here, and now the 1070 Ti Gaming is able to just edge out the GTX 1080 Gaming X, for what is a very impressive result in this title. Then finally, we see a 13% increase when testing Deus Ex Mankind Divided, and this was enough for the overclock 1070 Ti to match the overclock Vega 56 graphics card. In an AMD-sponsored title, nonetheless. Again, we see that an overclock 1070 Ti is able to mimic the performance of the GTX 1080 Gaming X. As surprising as the frame rate results were, I have to say the power consumption figures are just as surprising. Despite increasing the voltage, the total system consumption for the 1070 Ti configuration increased by just 14% to 346 watts. That's only 5% more power draw than the stock Vega 56 graphics card and 22% less once Vega's overclocked. 
Leaving the fan profile on auto, the MSI 1070 Ti Gaming still ran very quiet and yet temperatures maxed out at just 69 degrees after an hour long stress test. That said, for the most part, it sat at around 68 degrees and I feel anything south of 70 degrees is very cool, especially when the card's running at near silent volume levels. Okay, so firstly, I realize that wasn't the release day coverage many of you are hoping for. Unfortunately, though, getting any more testing done uh, with the limited time I had available due to being sick just wasn't possible. And that said, though, I think every man and his dog probably will be flooding the internet with a GTX 1070 Ti review today. So it might not be a bad thing that I've had to delay the really in-depth big benchmark video for a day or two. Still, I like that I've had the chance to focus on overclocking thermals and power draw for the MSI GTX 1070 Ti gaming model. It's pretty clear based on this very limited testing that out of the box the 1070 Ti sits smack bang between the factory overclock 1070 and 1080 graphics cards. If the game is particularly memory sensitive, the 1070 Ti does perform more like a factory overclock 1070, at least before you overclock it. That being the case, for the 1070 Ti to really make sense, you have to overclock it, and those that do will be rewarded. Basically, doing so enables factory overclock GTX 1080 Lite performance, and here we were able to match the Gaming X model from MSI. That said, you can also overclock the MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X as well, and that will extract around 6% more performance. So the GTX 1080 Gaming X currently costs $570 US, while the GTX 1070 Ti Gaming is priced at $490 US. Both are well over the MSRP, but let's ignore that fact for now. GPU pricing is inflated across the board. This means the 1080 costs 16% more, and with both custom overclocked, the 1080 would be around 6% faster. So the 1070 Ti is certainly better value, just not worlds better. Looking at the MSRP, the 1080 costs 11% more than the 1070 Ti, so under normal market conditions, the 1070 Ti is a lot less exciting, it has to be said. What the 1070 Ti does do, and really this was its primary mission, is cover off AMD's Vega 56. At the time of putting this content together, you could buy a Vega 56 graphics card for $420 US, albeit a loud reference card, but still, that's not a bad buy in today's market. I have to admit, picking between the MSI GTX 1070 Ti Gaming at $450 and a reference Vega 56 card at $420 is actually a difficult decision. Had Vega 56 been equipped with a twin Froza 6 cooler, that might have even been the way I ended up leaning. That being the case, I'm keen to test newly released games such as Assassin's Creed Origins, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, Middle Earth Shadow of War, Destiny 2 and Total War Warhammer 2 for example, to see how these two stack up. This is something you will see in my big benchmark video that I have planned for hopefully a few days time. For now, the GTX 1070 Ti looks to fill a very small price gap. Basically, you can save around $50 by buying the 1070 Ti uh, uh, over the GTX 1080, that is, and when you overclock it, you can achieve 1080 light performance. Um, it's hardly anything to get excited about, I know. Uh, it doesn't exactly redefine the market. NVIDIA is obviously hoping that by releasing this new GPU, they'll create a bit of a buzz around their products and improve sales, and that'll tie them over till their next major release. In any case, if you're after a new $400 to $500 US graphics card, you will not be steered wrong by the GTX 1070 Ti. It's a solid offering, even if it's not that exciting. And well, that's going to do it for this one. I'll see you guys again soon. I'm your host, Steve, working on getting my voice back, and I will be back with many more blue bar graphs soon. See you guys.